All right, first things first. Who are you and where do you live? My name's David and I live in Dundee, Scotland. How long have you been a gamer? I've gamed since very young. Very, like back in the uh, Amstrad days, you know, the, the old one with the green screen. And then um, later on to the, um, like, Zack McCracken and Monkey Island on the Amiga 600. But all of that time, it never even crossed my mind that to make my own game. Until I played a game called Atlantis Lost Tales. Like, it look, looks very dated now, of course, and the, the, you know, the characters are a bit dodgy, even for the time, I think. But it was the environments that um, felt like a real place. And, uh, and I was like, that, that's it, this is what I want to do. You know, I want to make my own worlds. So this game you're making, talk to me. The game I'm making is called Rose Cottage, and um, it's a point and click story. And I'm making it in Unity. The Adventure Creator plugin for Unity is just absolutely amazing tool and has allowed me to do the whole thing. Like things that I couldn't possibly have known how to do like an inventory system or saving and loading. It's all it's all built into this like amazing package and that, that plugin allowed me to make the whole working demo that I've got now as a as a solo developer. Solo developer? Is that a full-time job or something? No, it's just all in my spare time. <laughs> um, You're having a laugh, aren't you? Yeah, because I, I work from home and I work on a computer. So um, I've got like this um, L-shaped desk in the corner. And at the end of my work day, I literally turn 90 degrees and then just start again on making Rose Cottage. So it's taken up a lot of my time because um, I just can't believe how how hard it is making a game there's just so much so much to do so much to do and so little time what's this game about then so you play as edward barrington um he's a police detective the very end of the victorian era just coming into edwardian times and at the start of the game he's in his office and he gets a call from the hollow lane mortuary and it's actually his father-in-law who owns the place and uh, he asked Edward to, if he can investigate, there's been a, a series of disappearances of all of the staff at the mortuary, one by one disappearing. And uh, that's, that's his, his like call to action. Well, this all sounds very intriguing. All three of Thomas's staff gone missing. Bob, I'm leaving. To the mortuary. To the mortuary. So that's the setup, and then when he goes to investigate what's ostensibly a routine missing persons case, he finds out that it's much, much more than that. And um, as he's wandering around exploring the uh, mansion and the grounds, he, he's, uh, he either tries to rationalize or flat out ignore things that are happening around him. suspect a gust of wind blew the door shut and then locked it is this some kind of ghost story it's a story about family who are, are grieving over a recent death and how each of them are dealing with the loss in in their own individual ways and taking care of each other so it's actually it's actually quite wholesome except for all the ghost story stuff by the gibbous moon and the five-pointed star. If there are any spirits present, give me a sign. Any sign at all? By the gibbous moon and the five-pointed star, while the sky is bruised and broken, hear my voice and heed my call. Any spirits present, Make yourselves no, and move the pointer to yes. Hang about, who's that geezer? I had the story already, and I, uh, I knew I wanted to make it as a point and click game, but it just, it kept getting bigger and bigger in my mind with more and more areas. But I didn't have a protagonist. And then a few years ago, I saw the movie um, House of Ghosts, 
or Ghosts of Darkness, depending on where you are. And uh, one of the two main characters is a ghost hunting psychic, played by Paul Flannery, and he did such an amazing job. It was his first ever movie, actually, and he was just so funny in it. He just he carried the entire movie. He was he was amazing, and uh, yeah, I designed my character based on his character in that movie. So, what exactly is it I can do to help? A uh, little house clearance, seance maybe, something to spook the spooks. A little John Blazer special. Fast forward to now, and Paul is actually doing the voice in the game which is, is just amazing. Thank you, Internet. It's my beloved pipe. Purely decorative. I just use it for pointing with when giving directions. Sounds a bit silly to me. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it was going to have to be a bit silly, and I wanted to make him as silly as possible without making him bumbling, because, like, how on earth would he get to where he was in his job? I mean, that's what you want if uh, with a point-and-click... Um, adventure you want the character to be someone that you that you want to spend time with I had some help with a, a additional writing and dialogue from a friend uh, Lee Harvey and uh, we were just losing it right in the jokes it was really fun I once got into an argument with a furnace things got heated hilarious so which other voice actors can we hear in the demo the demo has uh, Katie Aitken as the voice of Miss Ellen. She does an amazing job. It is breaking my heart to have to say goodbye to everyone. How can I possibly let go? Marilena Gant plays Mary, Edward's wife. It's funny they recorded their parts individually, but then when I put it together, it really does feel like they're talking to each other on the phone. That was, that was great. Edward Farber is here and he seems very upset. Thomas is at the house. What's happened? Apparently, his employees at the mortuary have all disappeared. And then uh, Oliver Smith as the voice of um, Thomas. I can't endure another night in this house. I'm leaving. I know exactly who can help me get to the bottom of all this. And then also there's the original music. Uh, that's by Andy at Nutson TV and just captured the mood perfectly. It was quite a departure for him, actually, because he usually does the sort of 8-bit Zelda-type music. I like my games to have some depth to them. Talk to me. Quite often, you, you might be in a location like the main hall, and you can see through to another hallway, and then when you move through to a different room, you can see back into the other one. So I needed to have it all laid out. The entire mansion does actually exist as a as a 3D model, although a very simple one. And actually the mansion itself serves as a kind of hub area. So when you leave the mansion at the end of the demo, um, he'll go and do whatever he does outside and then return to the mansion um, with a new way of unlocking new areas of it. Beautiful. You want to shout out any other game devs? Foolish Mortals looks amazing. He really seems to know what he's doing. And I've actually spoke to him about that. It's like, and, and he, he reckons he doesn't. He reckons he's winging it, but I don't believe that. He's, he seems very professional. He's just my sort of guide of like how, how it's done. So just to clarify it, we do have design documents, puzzle dependency charts, budget documents, schedule trackers, and hundreds of spreadsheets. But it does still feel like we're winging it. This isn't what I was expecting, mate. So, yeah, my, like I say, um, I was actually slightly concerned that, like, this might not be what people are expecting. Like, you can see the screenshot, see the character design, and get it in, in your mind about what, what it's going to, what kind of game it's going to be. But it's only when you play the demo and you get the feel of it, the music and the voice acting and everything, that it's like, you're like, okay, okay, this is a bit different. So hopefully it's different in a good way. That's why they call me Terry Tibbs. Thank you, good night, much love.